Alrighty, welcome everyone. Thanks so much for joining us on this beautiful windy day. My name is Whitney McCurry. I'm the public information officer on the Pearl Fire. Uh, today you'll be hearing from incident commander Mike Smith and then we'll also hear from Larimer County Sheriff John Fayen. After that uh, we'll take about 10 minutes for questions and I'll facilitate that Q&A at the end. But yeah, let's kick it off with our incident commander Mike Smith. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Mike Smith. I hope I don't have to spell it for you. I'm um, the IC for the Pearl Fire, and uh, as you can see, the wind has arrived up here in Red Feather Lakes. Currently, the fire is at 128 acres. Um, there's been some questions about the discrepancies in acreage. We've seen it 132, 128. One of the reasons for that is when they're mapping the fire from the air, um, the people in the aircraft are actually drawing lines around the heat that they're seeing on the infrared imagery. And when we get spot fires outside of the line, some, some people are drawing lines around those spot fires, but as we get more accurate mapping, they actually exclude that spot fire and just include the, include the acreage of that spot included with the fire. So that's why the acreage has come down. It's just more accurate mapping. Um, today's been a pretty good day so far. The, we're, the wind just showed up here in the last half hour, but uh, we've had um, multiple aircraft. We've been using helicopters. We've been using what's called a scooper, um, which is an aircraft that, a uh, fixed wing aircraft that can fly down, lands in a lake, picks up water and comes back. It can actually put a lot of water. We, they fly in twos and fours and they can put a lot of water on the ground really quickly. So they did a lot of good work up there. We've seen no uh, perimeter growth today, which has been a really good thing, but this wind is going to present some challenges, but we do have multiple resources up on the fire currently. Um, I know we're well over 100 people. I don't have an exact number right now because we've had so many people coming in today, but we'll continue to work on structure protection, going through the neighborhoods um, around the fire, doing uh, as much as we can to prepare those houses in case fire were to come into the area. And up on the fire, we have some heavy equipment starting to work around the fire. We have crews digging hand line, uh, cutting trees, and then starting to chase down some of those spot fires. Uh, like I said in my video this morning, uh, our main focus right now is um, basically on the side of the fire that is closest to the structures. So we're really focusing on structure protection. That's where the majority of our emphasis is going. The fire, the, off to the north and west end of the fire, we're actually not even staffing it because there's no values at risk and our highest priority is those potential homes that could be impacted. So as we go into the next few days, we're supposed to get some moisture. We're actually starting to feel a little bit of it here, but we're supposed to then go back into a little bit of a drying trend for a couple of days. So I would expect to see some growth uh, we're hoping that this wind doesn't uh, push us too hard today, but uh, like I said, we've got folks up there ready to respond as needed. Um, as the next few days go on, we are staffing this fire up pretty significantly, even though we know we have moisture coming in over the weekend. Uh, depends on which forecast you look at, but it does look like uh, a pretty decent amount of moisture. So that's really going to help us as we move forward into the future of this event. Um, the hope, though, again, is that the moist air right now, the high relative humidities, the potential for some moisture is gonna overcome the potential downsides of these winds. So uh, that's what I've got to say. Um, I'm sure I'll, you'll all have some questions, but I'll turn it over to Sheriff. Thank you, Mike. Um, as you know, my name is John Fan. I'm the Larimer County Sheriff. So as Mike said, today's a good day. There hasn't been a lot of change except for in the positive direction. Uh, perimeter has stayed the same, acreage has stayed the same, contacts have stayed the same. So it's, it's what we would hope for up until, right, the wind is still, it's not over. The wind is going to make a determination where we have a lot of resources. And we know we've displaced a lot of people from their homes, and that can be unsettling. Our goal is to get you back into your homes as soon as we can. The one positive change we've made today, in addition to the lack of growth, but we have actually been able to change one of our evacuations from a mandatory to a voluntary. So getting some folks back into their homes if they can. We, lots of resources, as Mike said, couldn't do it without the great partnerships that we have with the Forest Service, with the uh, Division of Fire Prevention and Control at the state level. Uh, unfortunately, Larimer County, this is becoming a routine for us. So we're building those relationships, which makes it easier to protect you and your, your families 
but unfortunately we're going through it again and we're here to help if we if we can there is no such thing as a fire season anymore it seems like we have fires all year round as you can tell as the temperatures drop and the winds pick up and it's still going so we're hoping for um, to maintain those lines like mike said and to get people back in their homes as soon as we can okay and i'll turn it back over to mike or open it up for questions is this a favorable wind is it coming? Is it coming? Is it down sloping? Is this a favorable wind? It is not a favorable wind. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, it is a westerly wind, and all of the structures are currently to the east of the fire. But we knew that was the forecast for today, and that's again why we we're putting so much emphasis on prioritizing the neighborhoods and making sure that we've done as much work as we can to a secure the fire perimeter and b um, do as much work as we can to prepare those homes if they were to be impacted by fire. Mike, do you have an update on containment? Uh, currently, we're still at 0%. I think we'll see that change, especially with some moisture come in. Uh, I don't think we'll see it change drastically, but I would expect probably by end of shift tomorrow, we'll start to show some containment on the map. Some people might say oh, 128 acres is small. You guys have multiple scoopers flying. You got helicopters. You got how many people now working on it? I mean, you guys are concerned about this continuing to spread in the red feather leaves wherever it might go. Well, absolutely. It's all about values at risk is how we drive our decision making. So we sit down with the sheriff and the Division of Fire Prevention Control and our partners around the area and make sure that we understand what the values are at risk, not just the homes, but you know, what's out there. Is there critical infrastructure? Is there watersheds? We, and we go through and we, we look at all of those different priorities and then we say, OK, this is where we need to focus. And west winds at 40 miles an hour after what we saw this fire do yesterday, uh, absolutely we're concerned, but we're also prepared to face any of the adver adversities that might come our way. You said you were up seven. Now. How many are you at now? How many people? Uh, I, as I said a few minutes ago, I, I'm not sure. We're well over 100, and there's more coming. Um, we've got multiple crews coming in from out of state. Um, and I think currently, uh, the number is probably around 125, but that would be a little bit of a guess uh, just because it's been so fluid today. My final question for you, I know that we're looking forward to more rain and hopefully some more moisture, even snow potentially. Yep. Can you talk about how hot and dry it's been here over the last couple of weeks? I know that we haven't had a whole lot of moisture this summer here. How does that fuel play into what you're dealing with now? Well, it's been an interesting summer. We've had areas that have been pretty um, wet throughout the summer and within a few miles it's been like almost historically dry so as we it's hard to say that it's been a wet summer or a dry summer because it's been so variable um, during the alexander mountain fire um, there was standing water in uh, estes park and down in alexander down at the bottom of the canyon it was literally historically dry so it's just been really patchy. Uh, so that it's always challenging trying to figure out exactly what the fuel moistures are in the areas of the fire. But we do constantly pay attention to that. We have people out sampling those fuels on a biweekly basis, and that helps us prepare for what, what kind of conditions we're going into. But this has been a challenging summer because it hasn't been normal. Normally we'll see widespread rains or widespread dry, not as, not as patchy as it has been. Thank you. This might be a little more tailored for the sheriff, I'm not sure, but when it comes down to the cause, we know human cause, we know on private property. Do we, do we have any more specifics around what that was? So nothing that we're, we, we talked to the gentleman. Uh, we know who caused it. We've spoken with them. We're verifying stories at this point. So the investigation teams are still in there. Uh, we're not willing to uh, talk about exactly what we're learning at this point in case it changes and evidence takes us some other direction. Are the aerial assets grounded? And what's their threshold? Uh, it varies by aircraft but between the fixed wing and the rotor craft. Um, but yeah, they were all grounded about an hour and a half, two hours ago due to the incoming cells and this. Because of the direction of the fire as well as the the growth of the fire being non-existent at this point we made a determination that it was safe for those folks to re-enter their home on a voluntary basis if they wanted to knowing that if something catastrophic changed as it always can 
we could we could uh, place the mandatory evacuation back into place if we had to. Sheriff, do you know how many people are still under mandatory evacs? So our contacts haven't changed from uh, 2010 because we don't separate between mandatory and, and uh, voluntary at this point. So this is what it was yesterday. And have any structures been impacted? To my knowledge, there have I am unaware of any structures that have been impacted, but that's just to my knowledge at this point.